Kali and I welcome you with all our hearts. Just as Shankarnanda was talking about. He learned it from Baba, so did I. I welcome you with all my heart. And I'm sure if Kali could speak, she would say the same thing because she has a big open heart and is very playful and sometimes bites your finger when you're dancing with her. Not hard. Just enough to make her presence known. I wanted to talk today after Max's talk about the mind yesterday. I got to think. Where is it clearly laid out about the taxonomy of the self, the layers of self that are experiential? So I thought, let's give it a go to talk about this in the mind, in the body, and the experience of beingness and emptiness, and then of the manifest self the transcendental self. Most of Buddhism and all of Advaita, Robert Adams and Isagadatta tell you, you don't exist. You're a figment of your imagination, creation of mind. And they do everything to convince you that the self is no more than a mirage. And that's true to a point. Most of us, when we begin spirituality, totally caught up in the mind. Everything is mine. We identify with the mind. The mind speaking is ourselves, speaking about things important to us. Talk, 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 talk. Talk, talk, talk. And the center of our consciousness is in our brain, where we think the thinking takes place, where we think the thinking takes place. And people tell me about what problems they have getting to a quiet mind because they've read Krishnamurti, listened to Robert, heard about the science, silence of Ramana. So they think they need to have a quiet mind. And they go about it by trying with brute force to quiet the mind. which means using the mind to quiet the mind. This never works. I mean, I did it when I first started practicing in the 60s. I thought I had to overpower the mind, and I did. Every time a thought came up, I stopped it. But even with the quiet mind then, and the cessation of thinking, it felt all fucked up. There was no mental chatter. And I didn't have a clue as to what to do or where to go, because my mind wasn't guiding me. 
so I let go of the control to let mine come back, figure out a better way. So on the surface level, we are our minds. And the more we are our minds, the thoughts, the images, the analogies, the stories we tell ourselves, the less we feel our bodies and our emotions and our feelings, unless they're very raw feelings, very powerful feelings of anger, deep, intense love, deep depression, fear, more subtle emotions, more subtle feelings aren't perceivable because of the noise of the mind. But let's say we get below the mind either by dropping the center of attention out of our heads and into our bodies so that the, we're like at the bottom of the television tower broadcasting sound and visual images. From down here at the bottom, 500 feet under the top of the antenna, we're sort of by ourselves Well, the television images do all the talking. That's one way. If you sit in very strong fashion, half lotus or lotus, you sit very still. You'll feel a lot of pain at first in your knees, your hips, and your back. But after the third day of sitting this way, it all disappears and everything disappears. Your mind disappears. And the boundary between you and the world disappears and you become one with everything. It feels as if The world has rushed in to fill that space that you perceive inside of you. And there's only one totality of experiencing. This empty space is what Robert referred to as the gap and Nisargadatta as beingness. There's no thoughts here. There's only an observer, a very happy observer, because he has disappeared. And because he's disappeared, there are no problems. The problems arise, arose, arisen, arising from thinking have disappeared. And there's only one experience with great happiness, and delight. But at the end of each sitting, as it nearly comes to the end, the mind comes back. You open your eyes and once again, you're separated from an inside of you to the outside of the experiential world. Another way is to just sit quietly in a chair and watch your mind. Watch what it does. The eternal repetition of self-talk and self-judgments and judgments of others going on in your mind. And one thing you begin to recognize 
because you put some distance between you and your mind. So it becomes an object. So the mind is really boring. It's not nearly as good as even an average television show in providing entertainment. And it's not really providing information. It's just going over shit you already know. So there's no learning that goes on in the mind, except book learning, which as Vesalina can tell you, is valueless so far as the self is concerned. So the mind loses its significance in the place where you are. So those two methods, get deeper underneath the mind by dropping your consciousness into mind or watch it. Just keep watching it. You don't have to try to figure it out, take its measurements, find out its qualities, just watch it. And you'll see that what it says after a while is quite repetitious and boring. And you won't pay so much attention to it anymore. You'll just dwell in that beingness, that emptiness, bright and shiny emptiness. But grows very boring because emptiness in itself isn't very entertaining. Emptiness in itself is kind of boring and non-stimulating in any way. So, at some point, you alter your approach from just looking without judgment. Looking, doing nothing. Unconditioned awareness of the world from the viewpoint of beingness. And you see that mind is supported by beingness. Beingness itself is awareness of the emptiness within and without. All forms, including your body, are empty. All talking of the mind is empty of any real value also. So form is emptiness and emptiness is form. And all in all, it's quite dead. There's no self here. <laughs> There's just space, empty space. What happened? Where is the joy? So let's try something different. Let's try feeling instead of looking. Looking creates space and it creates time. What does feeling do? So I begin to feel my body. I scan my body, beginning with my toes, my arches, my heels, my calves, my ankles, my shins, etc. All over the body, time after time after time. 
And sometimes you begin feeling energies. Energies in your fingers, in your toes, your feet. Vibrations, tingling. And after doing this for a while, the energies seem to be moving in currents inside your body, especially in the hands towards the fingers. You can feel the energies moving from your elbow into the fingers and outwards into space. You can feel ent energies entering the bottoms of your feet like Mark, gradually moving upwards, like in the scent of the Kundalini. And you begin to feel bliss when you feel the energies throughout your entire body vibrating, activating the various chakras inside of you, the root chakra, etc., all the way up to the heart chakra, and the crown chakra. And you can go through long periods of intense orgasm. or of ecstasy where you can't move because of the strength of the ecstasy. And you say to yourself, why the hell didn't I do this 20 years ago? Why did I spend 20 years in emptiness when I could have been feeling bliss? So now you feel beingness. And beingness, instead of being empty, is now filled with energies. And you can identify with the energies as an aspect of you. And you call it your sense of presence. You feel it within you and around you and everywhere. And this sense of presence seems to grow in power and stature also because it gets filled out with the energies. It's another body that you feel in addition to your physical body. And after a while, it feels more, ro more real than your physical body with its feelings. And you can begin to feel that same physical body in other people. You can feel it in them because you've developed feeling. You've developed empathy. In a sense, you're becoming an empath to a certain degree. Where you can feel the emotions and the energies in another person. And then, as in my case, one day you run into a person who loves you intensely. And you can feel that love. And it has a different feel than when you're 20. You really let it in because the mind's not there anymore to make up stories and to put up barriers words and words and words and words as you lost in feeling and the feeling gets stronger and stronger the bliss gets stronger and stronger the love gets stronger and stronger and one day you can identify yourself as love you're no longer a human being but you're the emotion of love and you spend a lot of time in this area of experiencing emotions firsthand. Not from the point of view of being a human with emotions. But as being a theater 
for the emotional show. And you feel it. And the more you feel it, the more intense it gets. When you experiment, instead of feeling it, you look at it like you used to when you practice. And it creates distance. And the feeling goes away. So, you learn, looking creates a barrier. Feeling, love, creates unity. And then one day, after loving your sense of self, your sense of presence, and loving the sense of presence in another, in a very deeply devotional way. The devotion itself takes over. And there's an explosion of God within you. There can be. For the person who has first developed the emptiness inside. And for which the self has long disappeared. Suddenly, in th arising up out of that emptiness, that beingness, is the greatest love you've ever known. Great power. Huge, huge light. A white light, maybe white blue. That fills you up like a spotlight, was lit inside of your stomach and rises up into your brain with infinite power. And you know without a doubt it's God because the power there is so much you couldn't even conceive of it two or three years ago. And you see there's unity between that power and you. And the words that immediately come to your mind is that's God. I am in relationship with God. For that which he is, I also am. As a junior partner. And thereafter, you and God are in communion always. Sometimes you become God yourself and sometimes you stay as a human. But you have the power of God within you. Just as Mary speaks about. Feeling the power of God within. Power. Power. Spilling outwards from your sense of presence into all the world around you. And you will realize then that it's your mission to be a teacher. Because you can give this power, this awareness to others. You know that, Mary, don't you? It's the truth from within your own experience, correct? You become an angel of light. A daughter of God, a son of God. And all that you want to do is say, I am. And God is, and God is great, and I am great, for I am this inner force that is so huge, it could shake the earth. People around you notice it too, because your sense of presence is swollen with this spiritual ego that's built up into you because of the inflation that meeting God has given you. You now have a mission. You don't know what the mission is. And you search for the mission. You search for houses and homes and people that you resonate with. What a stupid word that is. 
and you conspire to make them burn like you burn. To feel the presence of God within and the love of God within. And you burn. You burn. You become like those children's toys that I used to play with, where you light them on fire and they grow like a snake, keep billowing out, billowing out. And your life feels that way too. It's my tax guy. I don't want to talk. But I don't want to just pick up the phone and then stomp it down like I usually do with salespeople. I don't want him to lose his sense of presence with me. Now, you have the fire of God within you. Sometimes the power is so intense that you feel like you're trembling all the time with this power, wanting, an, wanting a path to release it, to do something with it. But there's nothing to do except to be and to tell others about the gift of God within. Mary doesn't know how to tell this story yet. She's so flummoxed by what's happened to her. All that she can do is go, uh, 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 uh. But there's nothing like it. And the thing is, all those years spent in emptiness, there was no person there. That zenness was there, that emptiness. And it ate up the ego, the sense of personal sense of self. But when you discover God, it's very personal. That I amness within that you may have observed as an object 15 years ago has just been in a cocoon. I gotta cover him up. I don't know how many times he's gonna call. It's been waiting. It's been percolating inside your consciousness and the beingness. The beingness has been growing and changing and waiting to get out. Those 15 years in emptiness has been a cocoon, allowing the purity of the self to develop and metastasize into you until it bursts forth as God revealing himself to you or herself to you in an explosion of light and energy and power that nobody can understand unless they've been through the experience. The flowing of the light, the infinite light, the brightness of the light, and the power associated with that, the ego expands, but it's different now. It's not about yourself and what you can get. It's about yourself and what you can give. You are now a bringer of truth, a bringer of light, bringer of enlightenment, of happiness and joy that you just want to shout about. Look, I have it. 
I have what you're looking for. Please take it. Please take it. Or as the 116-year-old guy that I studied with, Dian Yogi. The building is burning. The house is burning. Quickly, come loot it for everything you can get from that house that's burning. Maybe it'll burn another five years, another two years, another 10 or 20 years. But this is a, a limited time event, the burning of the fuse, the coming of God into your life, which completely obscures the emptiness you went through all those years. Yes, the emptiness is there. It's the ground from which God emerges, the beingness within you, the emptiness within you. It's taken five years or 10 years or 15 or 20 years to morph into the God experience after you discovered feeling as the way, not looking. And you just sit there and you feel yourself burning. And in this power, you become like the sun. Radiating happiness and energy all around you. And those who are ready will be attracted to you. Those who are in their early spiritual state will feel something in your presence that maybe excites them. Oh, for Christ's sakes, oh, the other phone. I'm giving the Sermon on the Mount and tax collector keeps calling. I love you all. Feel my bounty, because it's yours also. Poor Vesselina, she's wrapped up in her young body and mind, disturbed by everything in her environment, being totally lost and not knowing where she's going or what's going to happen next. Not knowing that deep inside she's God. And it doesn't matter what the fuck you do. Once you discover your God, that's all you have to do is be God. You walk down the street and you own that street. You walk through the door of somebody's house and within half a minute you own that house. It's all yours. Your God and the emptiness has shown you that form and emptiness are one. So that form is yours because God is everywhere that that emptiness was. It's the nature of beingness in its purest form. I love you. I love you. And this is trying to put it all together because there's so many questions when one is early in one's practice. But after you found God, there are no more questions. Everything else unfolds as it should and as it would just within your presence, your joyful presence your huge presence. And here all words are silent because no words can really explain your state. Only if your hair was on fire and you were screaming and crying in joy could you begin to express how you feel inside. 
I love you. So you got it, Stevie, huh? No. How did you experience it? Well, I had to, I had a little bit of help from um, nature today. You were talking about emptiness, and uh, just out of nowhere, thunder exploded. And it actually freaked me out a bit. It was so loud. And then it started pouring rain. It got really dark. And then you started talking about God. And the sun came out. And I was just, uh, obviously, those two things probably have no connection at all. But to me, I'm choosing to connect them because I love it. <laughs> and it totally, uh, it struck me very deeply. It, it uh, it kind of felt when you were talking about the, the light, um, I was sort of re-experiencing my, my own experience through your metaphor of the, the, uh, the cocoon. And uh, it was so, so pure and, and um, it just let me up let me up. I felt like, uh, uh, maybe not my hair on fire, but I felt like my heart was on fire. So thank you very much. Mary. I saw you agreeing with everything I said. Everything, everything, everything. I am on fire, a blaze. Truth, 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 love in the face of love, you set me on fire. I am telling you the cocoon of emptiness, the cocoon of being two years in Zen and then exploding, exploding into God realization and just, I mean, emanating into that white butterfly. And Ed, I love you. I love you so, so much. I adore you. I am at your feet because he led me to you. When you surrender and give it all up, you have nothing to do with it anymore. He has led me to you and I'm telling you that you just, you just explained my whole, my whole, like all of it, it's just truth. Every single word, every single word. I, I am in a state of ecstatic bliss. I am on fire and it's orgasmic. I am, I am not, I am not going to withhold anymore. It is orgasmic. It is, I am just, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm at your feet. I know how that is. You worship the one who speaks in such a way because you know the truth of what is being said because it's also your truth. Yes. And it puts true. into words, it puts into words or gives a form to your splendor. Oh my God. The way he flows through you 
is absolute. It's a it it's a light. It's a it's a it's like a fireworks. The way he works through you. My God, I'm at your feet. God bless you, Ed. I absolutely love you and adore you. The same is true for me for you. Pardon? Because I feel the kindredness of our experiences. How could I not help but love you? Oh. But I feel this in everybody. I feel it in Jay. Yes. In Ian, Cassie. Everybody. Yes. Evie, Mark. Vesalina. Vesalina is God and she doesn't have a clue. That's right. She wonders, how the hell can I find this out for myself? And all that I can say is, stick around. Stick around. That's how I did it. I stuck around with, with Robert, who gave me emptiness. And I stuck around with Janet, who gave me God. It can happen anything, anytime that you love strong enough after developing an emphasis on feeling instead of on looking, on experience instead of emptiness, on form instead of the void. But being in the void, in the emptiness, is a crucible. You can think of it as steel gradually warming up, becoming cherry red, and then white. Yeah. And then blue white, yes. the highest temperature before it melts. I used to be on ore boats in the lakes, and the iron ore was in pebble form. It's called taconite. So you can imagine a cauldron full of taconite that gets brighter and brighter and brighter, and then explodes out like water hits the taconite and it explodes out in a flash of light and an explosion which is the ex initial experience of god within yourself cassie what did you feel you know i i was just I'm feeling that mine is more than an, it's not an explosive joy. It's just incredible tenderness. Just such tenderness. And it's just beautiful. It is like a golden, golden. So you're experiencing it like grace. Yes. Yes. It's just so That's Another sweet. aspect of that viewing of God. It's the most precious feeling too. Mary talks about it all the time. But it's felt separately from the power experience. Yes, you you, you move. You, you, you experience all the beautiful aspects of him. Yes. Ian? Oh, wow. Um, you know those steel um, beer barrels? My, my chest feels like one of those, but radiating. Uh, and, and it's my heart, of course. But it's, it's just radiating it. It's it's so beautiful. Uh, yes, thank you. You're welcome. 
Mark. Hello there, Edgy. Um, my explanation is not going to be as eloquent. I'd love to be eloquent, but I find it almost impossible at times. Um, and You're I do it. Too admire. smart yet? I'm uh, I'm I'm dumb as a rock. I'm really good at being dumb as a rock, like super good at that. Anyway, yeah, everything you talk about, including the power of God and everything, I do experience it, maybe not to the full extent, but I experience it to a great extent. Um, and my whole journey has started with the influx of bliss and euphoria, and it continues. So my whole journey is like the power that's coming in through my lower body into my sense of presence is a, a very compact, very divine, very intelligent and blissful energy. And that my story is to follow this energy, which forms a, a tunnel, like you call it, or a, it, 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 it extends into higher dimensions. And that, that is my story. And that continues to be my story. And that's it, another aspect yeah. is when you experience the light and power of God in all of its intensity. It's like it's the most intelligent, wisest being that you've ever met. You just want to fall down and worship it. And then you realize it's you and you have a bit of that in you too. And nothing nothing feels as good as devoting myself to the influx of this energy. It, it's self uh it provides benefit immediately it's like yeah of course this is this is where you want to go mark this is your this is your path so thank you jay um i'm cooked incinerated and in the words of the colonel extra crispy um actually i passed extra crispy eons ago I went to college in the Mon Valley, which was uh, Western Pennsylvania with the steel mills. And every night the steel, the mills lit up the skyline. Yes. And um, I just, nothing like the VFW Hall in Manesson, Pennsylvania for an experience that is from another world. Yes. But edgy that, you know, the, 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 the being incinerated in joy and love and bliss, the way you took us to that point today, uh, just exquisite, really. Um, really, just, I mean, to find, to find so, a message and a perfection so deep, uh, this, this is transformative. This is something, I, I had a contact high from Mary the whole time. Just simply in absolute bliss, because among all of the everyone here, she is so exquisitely tuned to your words and to joy and love in every moment among all of us. Today, there are 13 points of light, and I celebrate and love all of you because this is absolute pure joy. And Ed, I love you. You know, I grew up in Cleveland. Matter of fact, part of that time was about a quarter of a mile from the flats where the blast furnaces were. Oh, God. And I used to work on the railroad that was where that served the steel mills with those uh, 31,000 tons of 31,000 pounds of molten steel coming yeah, out of yeah. the lake. Yeah. And at night, especially those nights, when it was cloudy and overcast and a slight drizzle fell, the whole world lit up in Absolutely. blood red. Absolutely. And it was, whole... it was a divine experience because you didn't know whether it was the devil or it was God. <laughs> because the whole world was red, as red as during the daytime. Oh, God, yes. Absolutely. And you experienced that, too, in, in inclement weather, too, where the yeah, light no. is trapped underneath the clouds. The mills lit up the world, and it was God, and it was beyond, it was so powerful. It was from there that I started in Zen and started reading, and, and then I found you much later. But again, joy and bliss in every moment. But today was, and I'm glad you're still recording, 
because I had to practice the Colonel Sanders moment and I didn't want to get it wrong, but <laughs> I'm glad that, it, that for posterity, you can post this one. I won't sing, but still, I love you. <laughs> it's just a, I love I don't know, laughter resonates because of everything that you share with us and the love. The love is exponential, unbound, explosive, and a treasure. Thank you, Edgy. Toby. Toby, do you have anything to say? Anybody else? Eddie, anybody else? Zach, anybody else? I'll see you Sunday, maybe on Friday, maybe on Thursday. I don't feel a need to show up like I used to on the off nights. Uh, I'll just let it go more or less on its own from now on. But I still like to show up to see how people are doing. Thank you for coming. I love you. I love you. I love you. Bye-bye. You can continue to uh, chant and I really may recommend that Maha Meltdown because it's so lively so energetic okay I'm going to make Jay host for change <laughs>